Now let me discuss the effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the urinary bladder. Remember the cholinergic nervous system will act on the urinary bladder by acting via M3 receptors. Right by acting via M3 receptors. Now if you see this particular urinary bladder like the muscle which is present within the urinary bladder is the detrusor muscle. And to this particular urinary bladder, we have a structure which is called trigone. Okay, so this is the urinary bladder consisting of the detrusor muscle, and this will be the trigone of the bladder. Okay, so this will be the trigone of the bladder. Now what does this particular urinary bladder will be having the effect of the parasympathetic nervous system is the cholinergic nervous system or the cholinergic drugs what they do is remember parasympathetic nervous system will stimulate the detrusor muscle right will stimulate the detrusor muscle so once the detrusor muscle is stimulated remember what will happen is there will be contraction of the bladder right there will be contraction of the bladder whereas what does this parasympathetic nervous system will do to the trigone of the bladder remember parasympathetic nervous system will cause relaxation of right relaxation of the trigone of the bladder okay so what does this trigone contain the trigone it contains the sphincter right trigone it contains the sphincter so when parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated there is contraction of the detrusor muscle and there will be relaxation of the sphincter that is which is present within the trigone so thereby what will happen thereby there will be increase in the micturition so remember the effect of the parasympathetic nervous system is to increase the micturition how by stimulating the detrusor muscle and increasing the contraction by causing the relaxation of the trigone and thereby there will be increase in the micturition of the individual now what does the anticholinergic drugs do anticholinergic drugs they will result in urinary retention because anticholinergic drugs the action is exactly opposite to that of your parasympathetic nervous system so remember anticholinergic drugs they will cause urinary retention right they will cause urinary retention okay so that is the effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the bladder now after having discussed about the effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the bladder next let me discuss the effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the gastrointestinal tract right the effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the gastrointestinal tract now if you take the receptors which are present within the gastrointestinal tract the receptors which are present on the gastrointestinal tract are M1 and as well as M3 receptors. So M1 and M3 receptors they are present on the gastrointestinal tract on which the parasympathetic nervous system will act. Right? On which the parasympathetic nervous system will act. Now, by stimulating the M1 and M3 receptors which are present within the stomach. Right? M1 and M3 receptors are present within the stomach of the gastrointestinal tract. So by stimulating the M1 and M3 receptors, remember what will happen is there will be increase in the HCL secretion. Right, there will be increase in the HCL secretion by stimulating the M1 and M3 receptors which are present within the stomach. Now because of increased HCL secretion, there is increased risk of peptic ulcers. Right, increased risk of peptic ulcers. Okay, so remember a point. Once 
the cholinergic nervous system or parasympathetic nervous system is acting on the GAT, there will be increased HCL secretion and that will result in peptic ulcer formation. Now, coming to the effect of the parasympathetic nervous system on the peristalsis of the GAT. So, what the parasympathetic nervous system will do is, parasympathetic nervous system will increase the peristaltic movement. Right, will increase the peristalsis of the gastrointestinal tract. Now, once this particular peristalsis is increased by the parasympathetic nervous system, the gastrointestinal motility will be increased. Okay, so what is your parasympathetic nervous system doing now? It is increasing the peristaltic movement and it is causing the relaxation of the sphincters. And thereby what will happen is the food material or the fecal material it will be moving in the forward direction by the effect of the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, we have anticholinergic drugs. What does this anticholinergic drugs can be used? Anticholinergic drugs, they can be used as spasmolytic agents for intestinal colic. So, parasympathetic nervous system, they are increasing the spasmodic contraction of the intestines. Parasympathetic nervous system, they are increasing spasmodic contraction whereas you take the anticholinergic drugs anticholinergic drugs they will inhibit this particular spasmodic contraction right they will inhibit this particular spasmodic contraction and thereby this anticholinergic drugs they are used in intestinal colic Right, they are used in intestinal colic. So that is the effect on the GAT. So remember, the effect of the parasympathetic nervous system on the GAT, it will increase the HCL secretion. The effect of the parasympathetic nervous system on the GAT, it will increase the peristaltic movement and will cause the movement of the food material in the forward direction. Whereas, you take the anticholinergic drugs, the anticholinergic drugs, they will inhibit this particular spasmodic contraction and thereby they are useful in the treatment of intestinal colic. Now, let me tell you the effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the bronchus. Right, on the bronchus. So, if you see the bronchus, the receptors, the cholinergic receptors which are present are M3 receptors. So, M3 receptors are present on the bronchus. So, by the effect of the cholinergic nervous system, what is the effect on the bronchus is, there will be bronchoconstriction. Right, there will be bronchoconstriction and you take the anticholinergic drugs. The anticholinergic drugs will exactly do the reverse thing. The anticholinergic drugs, remember, they cause bronchodilatation. Right, they cause bronchodilatation. Okay, so cholinergic nervous system, what they do is, it acts on M3 receptors which are present within the smooth muscle of bronchus. By acting on the smooth muscle of the bronchus, the M3 receptors or the cholinergic nervous system will cause bronchoconstriction. Whereas anticholinergic drugs will block these M3 receptors and thereby the smooth muscle contraction will not be there and that will result in bronchodilatation. That is the effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the bronchus. Next. The effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the male sex organ. Now, now let me discuss the effect of the cholinergic nervous system on the male sex organ. Remember, due to the vasodilatation, what does the cholinergic nervous system do to the blood vessels? Cholinergic nervous system will cause vasodilatation. Due to vasodilatation, the cholinergic system is responsible for the erection of the male organ. Okay, So, due to vasodilatation, there is increased blood supply. And because of this particular increased blood supply, 
this is responsible for the erection of the male organ okay so that is the effect of the parasympathetic nervous system on the male sex organ next after having discussed about the muscarinic receptors now let me take up the nicotinic action right let me take up the nicotinic actions now you take this nicotinic receptors nicotinic receptors we have nn and then we have nm nn receptors they are present on the autonomic ganglia nm receptors they are present at the neuromuscular junction so accordingly we have the action on the autonomic ganglia and we have also the action at the neuromuscular junction right we also have the action at the neuromuscular junction now you take on the autonomic ganglia both sympathetic and parasympathetic ganglia they are stimulated by the acetylcholine okay so the receptors what you have is nn receptors so both your parasympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system they will stimulate the ganglia via acetylcholine right via acetylcholine all right next that is on the autonomic ganglia next you take on the neuromuscular junction remember acetylcholine will stimulate the skeletal muscle contraction by its action on the nm receptors so the receptors what we have is nm receptors here so what the acetylcholine will do is acetylcholine will stimulate the skeletal muscle okay so acetylcholine stimulates the skeletal muscle contraction by its action on the nm receptors all right so this is the nicotinic actions and completely about the muscarinic actions of the parasympathetic nervous system